hello everyone so today we will discuss about some more things about cholesterol in the last lecture we discuss about microwave tubes classification of microwave tubes cholesterol multi cavity cholesterol two cavity cholesterol and how two cavity cholesterol works and their characteristic and application in today's lecture we will discuss about reentrant cavities so as we know in the low frequency it is easy to calculate the rl the circuits is we can calculate uh, circuits by lumped circuit analysis so at low frequency the cavity resonator can be represented by a lumped constant circuit but when we talk about microwave frequency that is in tens of megahertz both the inductance and capacitance must be reduced to a minimum in order to maintain resonance frequency as we know frequency is inversely proportional to the underwood of inductance and capacitance f equal to 1 upon 2 pi and root lc so for higher frequency the values of inductance and capacitance should be low and reentrant cavities are designed for using cholesterol at microwave tubes and reentrant cavities is one in which the metallic boundaries extend into interior of the cavity there are so many types of reentrant cavities that can be used some of them are coaxial cavity okay and radial cavity another one is tunable cavity another one toroidal cavity and butterfly cavity coaxial cavity is mostly used among them okay so this is the this is coaxial cavity and this is cross sectional view of coaxial cavity in this the inductance is reduced to a minimum by salt wire therefore the reentrant cavities are designed for use in cholesterol and microwave triodes a reentrant cavity is one in which a metallic boundary extend into interior of the cavity as i already said so coaxial cavity by using the coaxial cavity number 1 inductance decrease so as i said to for a resonant frequency inductance and capacitance value should be decreased for high frequency and another is resistance losses reduces and self sealing enclosure prevents radiation losses okay in as it is coaxial cavity so we can calculate the impedance by the as a method of coaxial line so the co uh, co uh, characteristic impedance of coaxial line is z0 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of mu epsilon ln b by a ohm okay <clears throat> now the coaxial cavity is similar to a coaxial line sorted at two ends and joined at the center by a capacitor okay so if you want to calculate the input impedance of each sort sorted line so as in coaxial line we know that input impedance can be calculated by this formula zn equal to j z0 10 beta l if we put the value of z0 from the previous equation then it will come like zn equal to j 1 upon 2 pi and root mu epsilon ln b by a 10 beta l it is imaginary terms so there is only inductive terms it means okay 
so there is no resistive term so this term 1 upon 2 pi n root mu epsilon ln b by a 10 beta l is inductive so we can say it is x of x in so l equal to we can calculate inductance by 2 x in by omega so by putting the values of this l will come like 1 upon 2 pi and root mu epsilon sorry there will be another term omega okay and the capacitance of the gap can be given as as we know capacitance is epsilon a by d where here a is area area is pi of a square okay d is so this way we can calculate the capacitance of the gap now <coughs> if you want to calculate the resonant frequency at resonance inductive reactance inductive reactance of the two salted coaxial lines in series equal to capacitive reactance of the gap so what is inductive reactance omega l equal to 1 upon omega cg if you will put both the values then and calculating then them we can calculate the value of 10 of beta l that will be dv upon omega a square ln b by a here v is the phase velocity okay v is phase velocity that is 1 upon 1 root of mu epsilon the value of this in free space is equal to the velocity of light that is 3 into 10 to power 8 meter per second okay solution of this equation Okay, solution of this equation gives the resonant frequency of the coaxial cavity as equation contains the tangent function it has a infinite number of solution with larger value of frequency therefore this type of reentrant cavities can support an infinite number of resonant frequencies or modes of oscillations now velocity modulation process when electron are first accelerated by the high DC voltage V0 before entering the buncher grid, their velocity, as we talked in last lecture, that we can calculate the velocity of this. So, this is 2 E V0 by M, where E is the charge of electron, V0 is the DC voltage, and M is the mass of electron. By putting e, value of E and M, we can calculate the point. 593 into 10 to power 6 and root of v naught so by putting the value of that dc voltage we can calculate the velocity of that electron okay when a microwave signal is applied to the input terminal the gap voltage between the buncher grid appears as vs is equal to v1 sine of omega t where v1 is the amplitude of the signal and it should be less than here should it should be v1 okay point order it should be v1 the velocity modulation process <coughs> so as we already talk about that that average transit time can be calculated by tau is equal to d by v naught and average gap transit angle can be calculated by omega or tau so if we want to calculate the average microwave voltage in the buncher gap then it can be calculated as we know that average voltage average can be calculated by 1 upon time integration of t0 to t1 and value of voltage that is v1 sine omega t dt so if you will integrate this term we will get the integration of sine omega t is minus of cos omega t so by putting the value it will comes v1 upon omega t cos of omega t1 minus cos of omega t0 so by rearranging these terms and we can calculate the value like this vs is equal to v1 beta 1 sin omega naught plus theta g by 2 okay where theta g is transit time sorry average gap transit angle and what is this beta 1 beta 1 is the beam coupling coefficient where this beta 1 is the sine theta g by 2 upon 
थीटा जी बाई टू इज 